Hello YouTube, this is Sonic 2 kk <laughs> and that is such a strange name for me to have, and uh, I don't know why I said it. Anyway, I'm hyper because I just drank a full bottle of Coke, a cola, not what do you think, don't. Anyway, I'm going to be teaching the programming language Lua today, and Lua is a very fast and lightweight and unbeatable programming language. I think World of Warcraft, I don't play World of Warcraft, uses it, um... Roblox uses it, and Gary's Mod uses it, though I, I own Gary's Mod, but I don't play it. Uh, and I just haven't got around to playing it, because I make games and don't play them. But, I'm going to teach you how to use it. And, first of all, what you want to do is download and install the... Uh, all you want to do is go... And I'm going to open it up, because I think I have tabs open that are, like, private stuff, like Facebook, that I don't want to open. But, um... Hold on. Yeah, right, so I'm going to teach Lua, as I've already said about a million times. And what you want to do is download, install Lua, just go to Lua.org and then go to Downloads and download Lua 5.2.2, uh, I think it is. In fact, I'm going to go out of this. Um, yep, press... What is it I press? Lua. I type Lua. And Lua 5.2.2. So you want to get Lua 5.2.2. Open up command prompt and type Lua. Or if you're on Mac terminal. And I think on Linux you type in terminal. Or you type in. You open up terminal. And type in Lua. And it'll open up a uh, Lua prompt. And here you, is where you type all your magical Lua code. Like I had a lot of tests before this on Lua. And I might scroll up and show you some. But it'll probably just confuse you since you're a beginner. Hopefully. Alright right. So what you want to do is. You want to have text up here on the screen, right, don't you? Yeah, I think you'd want to uh, make your computer say hello to you. So what you want to do is print. And what does this do? Print, what it does is you say print, which tells your computer to print whatever is in the brackets. So whatever you put in the brackets, and if you want to type in, if you want to put in words, you can either use single quotes or double quotes. Um, and whatever is in here, we print it out to the screen. Look, hello world, hello world, I'm here, I'm programming, hooray! Um, so yeah, that prints out on the screen, so you've put in a word here with your quotes, either your double quotes or your single quotes, and it'll be printed out to the screen. And it has to be in double or single quotes, that's just the way it has to be. Because this is a thing called a string, which I'll get into in a second. Right. There are things called data types in Lua. And it's the type of data you want to use. And in Lua, there's only two types of data. And those are strings, which are strings of characters. And this one letter, or a dollar sign, or an asterisk, or a percent sign, or an at symbol, or an exclamation mark, or a hyphen, stuff like that, are uh, characters. And um, you a string of them, even if it's just one, you can either use single or double quotes. And that tells Lua, right, this is a string that I'm making. And in Lua, if you're coming from something like C++, every, or C, any language that uses longs or doubles, every number in Lua is a uh, double. So you don't have to like specify, you don't even have to specify the data type, which I'll get into in a second. So in Lua there are numbers, so if you want to type in, uh, say 10, you're printing 10, but say, so that's a number, but that's, Lua calls this a number, that's actually the official data type name in Lua. But say you are being a derp and you type in this. Um, Lua still classes this as a number. It thinks, oh, I see what you're doing. You put in the quotes here. You must have been messing up. And I'm going to turn it into a number for you. Because I'm just handy. And you can turn it into a string if you really want to. So, I bet I'll get that. I'll get, that. I'll get into that later. So, uh, Lua, numbers, even if you have quotes around them, are just numbers. Like, you can't make a number. A string, unless you use a special function, which I'll get into later. And a string is something with double or single quotes. Got it? Got it. Right, so, what's next on the agenda? Uh, to learn about. Mm. Mm. 
memory functions. Yeah, right, so there's the print. So now I'm going to teach you about functions. And what is a function? Oh, can I do this? In yep, I can. So I'm going to do that. So a function is basically where you make a function that will repeat a certain amount of code over and over again. Um, it's a list of instructions that will be ran every time you um, every time you call the function, which is basically use the function. So what you want to do is you want to to start a function, you type function, and then the name of your function. This tells you we're making a function. And then here, uh, call it print hello. Just ignore that. That's just a phone ringing in the background that you don't need to worry about. Hold on, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to pause. So, print hello. And what this function will do is it will print out uh, whatever we tell it to do. It, well, it actually doesn't have to print out something. We can make it do something else if we really want. We could make it that. Uh, yeah, we could make it print a number, or we could make it do something completely different. We could make it shut down our computer if, like, we tried hard enough. Probably, actually, no, we probably could do that, and you would want to do that. But always, whenever you're making a function, make sure the name is relevant to whatever the function's going to do. And these parentheses or brackets are needed because these are for. Uh, arguments, which I'll get into in a, week, in a little second. In a second. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, print hello. This is our function. You need this. And here inside the function, we tell it what to do. So you press enter. You don't need any colons. You don't need curly brackets. Just uh, press enter. Or if you're in the interactive layer prompt, hold shift and press enter. And it will probably do that. So... Uh, what you want to do is print and then hold shift again and press end and that tells you right the function's ended and so what we want to do is we need to do something called calling the function and calling the function is basically just saying right we're going to use this code basically means use the function calling a function is using a function so you type the name of the function and you do that, and it prints hello world. Yay! Now, a little thing I'm going to get into before I talk about functions with arguments is a thing called keywords. And in Lua, a keyword is something that's built into the language. It's something that you can't remake. You can't, like, operate or overload in C++ if you ever use that. But you can't, like, print. Print is a keyword. You can't make a function called print. Because print is a function, if you've noticed. It uh, has the brackets. And print is a keyword. Function is a keyword. And is a keyword. And there's lots and lots of other keywords like for or in or to string or to number. But we'll not get into those basically. All you know is something that's built into the Lua language is this. And I'll tell you whenever it's a keyword. So function is a keyword in Lua. Print is a keyword in Lua. And end is a keyword in Lua. You can't make a function called print. You can't make a function called end. And you can't make a function called function. Always remember that you just anything that's a keyword you can't make a function or a variable out of, and that's what I'm going to talk about now. Variables, or no functions with arguments is what I'm going to talk about. So whenever you're making a function, uh, I'm going to call mine say something. We're going to use the function keyword like we always do, and in the brackets we're going to type in what to print, and in here is what to print. This is a placeholder. This is yeah, it's a placeholder for whatever we're going to enter when we call the function. Because when we call the function, we will put something else in here. We will put, like, um, hello, or goodbye, or uh, get out of my face, or something like that. Or go home, you're drunk. And uh, what we will do is print... What to print? So we'll have the user enter something for this value. And whatever they enter for this value here, so what they enter here, uh, this is going to go here, which will be whatever the user enters here. So if the user enters hello here, hello will be outputted here. So now if we do 
function says something. I mean, tab. Hello? Hmm, hold on. Hmm. It doesn't want to print. Oh, well, that's not new. We're right at the front. Oh, because. Darn. Anyway, I'm gonna try and uh, fix this up. I don't know what was going on there, because I. As soon as I stopped recording and I called it, it worked. So as soon as I. So. Let's say. say something it says hello because what we did up here uh, is function says something what to say and then we wrote and here and we print out whatever we enter here or whatever the user enters that is running our program so if they write here um, Yeah, hold on. Uh, so if we call say something, or if we use say something, and print out 10, it'll print out 10. Or if we say something, that's what it says. So, um, the last thing we're going to cover in this tutorial is variables. And variable, think of variables as a box. So we make a box, but we have to name the box. So we're going to call this uh, one name. So we have a box called name, and we're going to, this means, like, this is putting something in the box. This is the assignment operator, so we're assigning the box a value. And we're going to call that Eamon, because that's my name. The name equals Eamon. So this box that's called name now has the string Eamon inside it. So if we print name, it'll print Eamon because name, it's like a function argument. Um, name will be substituted for Eamon and that's basically what it is. So name is a box that holds the value Eamon. This, this is the, uh, the name and this is the value. And if we make another one called name, now say we already have a variable called name and we want to put something else in the box and we call it Jerry and we print uh, name it'll say Jerry and not Eamon because if you have the same variable name and you send something to it again this will get kicked out of the box and this will be put in so this Eamon gets replaced with Jerry if you have a variable with the same name as this one up here and if you try to call it or if you put it somewhere, it'll print out Jerry instead of Eamon. And there's no way to get this back unless you do name equals Eamon. Uh, so that's all for this tutorial. What have we learned? We've learned about data. Uh, we learned about the print keyword. We've learned about data types. We've learned about numbers. We've learned about strings. We've learned about variable. We've learned about functions, I probably spelled variables wrong, and we've learned about functions with arguments, and whenever you put something in the parentheses, they're called arguments, and they're extra pieces of information, I think I've already said that though. And so we learned this tutorial, um, feel free to go back over the tutorial, if you want me to elaborate on something, I will, uh, I'll, well, I'll, more than happy, I'll be more than happy to do it. So thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Yeah.